This is Polyphonic Press, the podcast where two music fans pick a classic album completely at random. Using the patented random album generator, they are given an album to review from a curated list of over 1,000 classic releases, spanning multiple genres. And now onto the show. Here are your hosts, Jeremy Boyd and John Van Dyke. Hey, welcome to Polyphonic Press. I'm Jeremy Boyd. And I'm John Van Dyke. And uh, let's not waste any time. We've got the uh, patented random album generator right in front of us here. Uh, So let's hit the button and see what album we're going to be listening to this week. And the album we're going to be listening to is Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin 2. Okay. Okay. This is an album I, I know you're familiar with, very familiar with. Uh, as am I. Um, so we don't need to really uh, wonder what this is going to sound like, but it'll be a cool refresher to to talk about it. But let's uh, just see what the review on allmusic.com says, so we give a little bit of context. Uh, is recorded quickly during Led Zeppelin's first American tours, Led Zeppelin II provided the blueprint for all the heavy metal bands that followed it. Since the group could only enter the studio for brief amounts of time, most of the songs the uh, composed to are re- reworked blues and rock and roll standards that the band was performing on stage at the time. Not only did the short amount of time result in a lack of original material, it made the sound more direct. Jimmy Page still provided layers of guitar overdubs, but the overall sound of the album is heavy and hard, brutal and direct. Whole Lot of Love, The Lemon Song, and Bring It On Home are all based on classic blues songs. Only the riffs are uh, only the riffs are simpler and louder, and each song has an extended section for instrumental solos. Of the remaining six songs, two Sportlight uh, acoustic touches, Thank You and Ramble On, but the other four are straight-ahead heavy rock that follows the formula of the revamped blues songs. While Led Zeppelin II doesn't have the eclecticism of the group's debut, it's arguably more influential. After all, nearly every one of the hundreds of Zeppelin imitations used this record with its lack of dynamics and uh, its pummeling riffs as a blueprint. Did you say lack of dynamics? I thought that album had lots of dynamics. Uh, I guess it was, uh, for the time, pretty, pretty loud. Uh, but compared to now, yeah, I guess. Okay. So this album was released on the 22nd of October, 1969. Uh, genres are hard rock, heavy metal, blues rock, uh, released on Atlantic records and produced by Jimmy page. And so if you're listening along, um, side one has, uh, four songs it starts with whole lot of love and ends with thank you. So if you're listening along with us, uh, if you listen to uh, the first side, if you're listening to vinyl or if you're listening on CD or other uh, places that don't have sides, uh, if you want to stop at the song Thank You, and then that's when we'll pause halfway through the album and, and discuss it. And um, so without further ado, let's get into Led Zeppelin 2 with the uh, first song, Whole Lot of Love. Here we go. Okay, ending side one with thank you. You know what I always liked about Led Zeppelin is, and I don't think they get enough credit for this, is the... I was just listening to that last song, and and it's... They, they're they known for this, like, hard rock band and sort of, you know, being the, you know, proto-heavy metal band and sort of setting the blueprint for what that would look like. Um, but also these like really uh like acoustic folk songs like almost like a bob dylan sort of thing um their version of it anyway and um and 
a sort of like a Celtic thing, I guess, as well. They they that one, yes, but a lot of their other songs have that as well, more so anyway. Um, and so it's 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 like there's there's these the two sides of this band. There's that you know hard rock, bluesy sort of guitar driven stuff, and then there's also this like acoustic-y sort of folk thing. And I think it's really cool that they're able to to do that um both things really well and i don't think they get enough credit for for the uh more acoustic stuff that they did and it's it's true it's not the thing that people think of when it comes like people think led zeppelin oh yeah heavy oh yeah you know um <laughs> which is all fine and dandy because yeah because you know their heavier stuff is really good and and they kind of were the uh, prototype for that whole scene, but they had this. Uh, yeah, they they would often like uh, you know experiment with other like you know acoustic instruments and stuff like that in the studio. And I mean, sometimes I, I think Jimmy Page had a hurdy gurdy, which appeared on uh, um, the uh, song "Remains the Same," not on stage, but in the movie. But yeah, he's always played around with like mandolins and his 12 string is usually um it comes out on the on the softer stuff it's it's true it's just this uh, complete other they were you know they don't get the credit as being a sophisticated band as they were no i mean john paul jones is a like classically trained you know jazz musician really and like he's he's a virtuoso and he can play basically anything uh yeah and that that's the thing too is within led zeppelin he doesn't get enough credit for how good he is i mean like yes he he's an amazing bass player uh i mean just list like coming up the bass part on ramble on i mean it's just this really beautiful melodic thing that he's doing and really works well with John Bonham's, uh, with the the way that he plays, where he's sort of playing a little bit behind the beat, just kind of laying it back a little bit. He's a li- always a little late, which creates this really cool groove. Uh, and just, I mean, everybody talks about the, you know, the thunder power of John Bonham's drumming. I mean, that's... Yes. Between his, the Jimmy Page's guitar and John Bonham's drumming, that's the sound of Led Zeppelin. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, um, uh, e- even uh, John Bonham's uh, drumming is a lot more sophisticated. I mean, everybody ta- talks as he's being one of the greatest drummers, and it's true he he is because he's his sophistication and uh, some of the things he pulls off. Like I was even listening to, uh, well, good grief, whole lot of love, just that the. The driving beat of the thing is boom, 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 and it's just, I mean, that's a really unusual beat for a hit song. Yeah, it's like this weird sort of shuffle thing, and and it's like it that's he could have very easily done just a regular backbeat. The song wouldn't have been nearly the same. Exactly, it wouldn't have the same feel. So yeah, no, I mean, and it's, it's, I was thinking about this, how strong this album is. And usually a lot of the time artists will have a really strong first album and then the second album isn't quite as good. And I think the reason, and this happened uh, with the Black Crows too. I think those, I'm sure there are other examples, but those are the two, these are the two that I can think of because these are the ones that I'm familiar with is this album was actually recorded while they were on tour. So they're actually going around in the UK and parts of the US and stopping at different studios and um, just recording whenever they can. And I think because they were such, they are just from playing every night, they were so their muscle had been worked so well. I think that has a lot to do with the strength of this the second album. Same thing with the Black Crows. They uh they recorded the Southern Harmony like a week after their first tour ended. So they so I think just having a strong second album 
I think the key really is do it when you're you have the chops and when you're everything is really tuned in and dialed in. Uh, I think that has a lot to do with how strong this album is. Just that you know they're they're just used to playing with each other every night. So yeah. So anyway, I guess we will move on to the uh, the second side of the album, and uh, it starts off with the song "Heartbreaker." So here we go. All right, ending the album with "Bring It On Home." Uh, I always like that song. It's sort of it's two recordings edited together: uh, the uh, full band part, and then there's just the part with Jimmy Page and Robert Plant. I always like the contrast of the the two. Though I like the way that that was done. Assembled, yeah, yeah. I mean, this album. I I mean, I grew up with this album. I know you did too, and so it's like you know. This isn't this isn't new music to us, but I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't really know what else to say other than you know this is they really started their career off with a like a one two punch, you know. I mean, they were just the first album was great, this album is great, um, you know, and they I don't think they well they never put out a bad bad album. It's easy to say that, but you know maybe if they had continued, they would have dipped in quality but they i don't think there is there are some albums that are better than others but there isn't a bad album and even going by tracks i can't think of too many tracks that are you know bad tracks or anything on any of their other albums um yeah i can't really even think of one i mean um presence the album presence which i've always kind of liked has always been sort of considered their for lack of a better term, low spot, but it's not that low. Really? Because I always, I thought it was in through the outdoor was considered the, the least favorite among Zeppelin fans. Maybe, but then again, that's getting towards the end of the band, but there's still quite a lot of good stuff on that album. I, I can't think of anything that's like particularly bad, but yeah, you know, it's funny. It's, I, 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 I never, I, I could be wrong, but I never heard of any, I'm sure they, they all had like disagreements and stuff, but I never really heard of any like animosity within the members. The only reason they stopped is because John Bonham died and otherwise they probably would have kept going, but I could be totally wrong because I'm no expert on the band, but I, as far as I know, there was never any animosity or fighting between the members. They all pretty much got along um, which is rare. Uh, yeah, I mean, there might have been the odd argument here and there, but I think overall they pretty well got along pretty well. It's funny, it's, I, as I've sort of learned a little more about music, music and just like history and stuff, and I remember the first time I heard Moby Dick, I had never heard anybody play the drums like that in a drum solo. And I was completely blown away. I didn't know you could do that on the drums. Um, but then I, then I st- st- sort of started learning. It's like, oh, okay. So he's kind of, he's pulling stuff and sort of influenced by like people like Buddy Rich and things like There's that. There's not too many drummers that can pull that sort of thing off. And many have tried, but really, you got John Bonham, you've got uh, um, Ginger Baker, uh yeah, not too many. Like that's there's I know there's other ones, but in in a show, it's it's drum solos are tricky because you have to be really good uh to to pull off a drum solo because most of the time people don't want to hear a drum solo. <laughs> and but it, you know, if you if you're really good and you can do it, I mean, it, you know, it's it's it can be amazing or it can, you know, be totally boring and it's a fine line yeah so so yeah it's a very tricky thing to do um and you know every i think a lot one of the highlights of a a zeppelin show is when john bonham would do moby dick and sometimes it would you know go in for 10 minutes and uh, you know it was just always amazing and uh but yeah this this i i honestly i think this is probably my favorite zeppelin album 
um, this one. Yeah, yeah, I've always been very attached to four personally, but uh, this one is a really good one. Um, I think the first four for sure are just like there's this you can't really go wrong. Um, but like I said, it's it's hard to find a really like it's hard to find a bad album of theirs anyway. Yeah, so I don't. I think I know the answer, but I'm I gotta ask it anyway. <laughs> um, uh, would you listen to this again? Oh yeah, it, I mean have. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. This isn't the first time I've listened to it, and it won't be the last. Yeah, so, yeah. So I, uh, yeah, I guess we will uh, end the show there. Thank you so much for listening. If you made it this far, uh, you can go to uh, polyphonicpress.com. You can drop us a line. And uh, if you feel inclined, you can go to uh, uh, patreon.com slash polyphonic press to help out the show and get these episodes a week before they go live. And lots of cool perks. You can pick an album for us to review and get a shout out at the end of these episodes. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm Jeremy Boyd. And I'm John Van Dyke. Take it easy. <laughs> <laughs>